Hey there, my name is David Wad. I am one of the wonderful developer evangelists here at R3 working on Corda, and today I'm going to give you a quick five minute tutorial on how encryption and cryptography work. Let's get started. Our agenda for today is simple. We're going to start with what encryption actually is, then we're going to talk about how it works, and then we'll actually talk a little bit about some of the algorithms that are used to make it happen. What is encryption? Well, Encryption is the process of encoding a piece of information such that it can only be used by the intended owner or recipient, taking a message like this and turning it into something that can't actually be used unless it is given to the actual recipient, maybe turning it into something like this. Now, if you found this message, you wouldn't actually know what to do with it because you weren't the person intended to receive it. And unless you knew how it was constructed, you wouldn't be able to convert it back into the original message. Now this brings up the question of what public key encryption actually is. Imagine two people who want to communicate with each other. We'll call them A and B, or Alice and Bob. They both will maintain two pairs of keys. A will have a public key and a private key. B will have a public key and a private key. Now when A wishes to communicate with B, A will take their message and use B's public key to encrypt the message that A is sending to B. So, when that message is sent, only B will be able to decrypt the message using B's private key. So you can start to see why the private key becomes very important. And the public key is perfectly safe to share with anyone who wants to send you information. If you've done any digging into encryption, you've probably seen the acronym RSA in the past. This is short for Rivest, Shamir, and Edelman. These three computer scientists created one of the most foundational and widely used encryption algorithms ever. It supports both public key encryption and digital signatures, and it is built on a very important theoretical basis and assumption that factoring a very large integer into its prime factors is a very hard computational problem. This turns out to be a robust assumption. So what does that mean? Let's imagine you had a number like 391, and you wanted to figure out what are two prime factors or what are two numbers that, when multiplied together, equal 391? If you're wondering, the answers are 17 and 23. Now, this turns out to actually be a really difficult problem in computer science, and computers cannot solve it quickly. Why is that useful for encryption? You will start to see in a minute. For building our encryption, we're going to define a couple of terms that we're going to use when we talk about the actual process. We're going to define M, which is just the message itself, which is functionally an integer, P and Q are going to be large prime numbers, not like 17 and 23, but much larger prime numbers. We'll define E, which is essentially an integer, a small one, and it's going to be our public exponent. We will also define N, which is the product of P and Q, our large primes from before. We'll define the totient function. We'll have a link to Euler's totient function in the description, but for now, all you need to know is that it exists. Uh, and we'll define D, the private key for a user. We're going to create two keys, a public key and a private key, where the public key is the exponent and the product of those two primes, and the private key is going to be the integer d along with the product from before of those two primes. So now we get to the actual RSA algorithm itself. What we do is we select p and q, two large primes, and make sure they're not equal. We calculate n by taking the product of those two numbers. We use Euler's totient function, which is defined there, essentially subtracting one from both of those numbers and computing that. We'll select a public exponent, e, by taking the greatest common denominator of the totient and e. Then we'll calculate d by computing e modulo totient of n. Then we'll have our public key and our private key. Now you don't have to worry too much about the mathematical details happening here because what we're more interested in is the details on the other side of it, where we have the ability now to encrypt and decrypt. Encryption happens by taking our plain text input m and raising it to the public exponent and modulo n. Then we'll do the same thing with decryption, where our ciphertext c will be input to this and the original message will be c to the power of d mod n. And that d is our private key. Now you can start to see why we need to have it because anyone who has the private key can find the original message. Just some helpful notes for you if you're trying to follow along. Remember that modulo is the numerical remainder of division, meaning 0 mod 4 is equal to 0, 1 mod 4 is 1, 
and 4 mod 4 is 0. Next up, totient of n or phi of n is defined as Euler's totient function. What it does is it essentially counts the positive integers up to a given integer n that are relatively prime to it. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. You won't have to worry about it too much to understand the basics here. And of course, I would say to choose E very carefully. There's a great paper on the University of Michigan that I will link to in the description that you can read on why the public exponent can be really dangerous if misused. Now, just to recap, anyone who wants to send secret messages can use these encryption and decryption formulas, and that's what your computer is actually doing when you try to send encrypted messages. It's doing a scheme very similar to this one, where it is using public and private keys from different parties and composing messages that can only be received by those parties. And so here are some of the formulas you can use if you wanted to get a better understanding. Highly recommend looking into it. Now, in terms of some popular algorithms, RSA is very widely used. But there are other encryption schemes such as MD5, SHA-256, and HTTPS, TLS, and SSH, which you have probably heard of at least once or twice. If you followed all that, then hopefully you gained an understanding of how encryption and cryptography work at a basic level. And we want to thank you for watching. Please do feel free to reach us on YouTube, on LinkedIn, Twitter, and on our Slack. And of course, feel free to check out our new developer training site and the documentation. We look forward to hearing from you, and thanks again for watching.